The following video demonstrates how to import survey observations into Enforce and then calculate a simple traverse. So I'll begin by going to observations, right clicking, choosing import. I'll select the file CPD2, which as we can see is a log file, i.e. it's been downloaded from an instrument. If I quickly open that with notepad, you can see the raw data here. And at the top, the first line tells Enforce which instrument the data was downloaded from. So close that down. Press open, the file's automatically been read in, and Force is telling us it's got six setups. If I click the job, we can see those setups, their instrument heights, the numbers of readings, and the stations that they intend backside and foresight. If I focus on the first setup, we can see the it backside station called I5. We use a minus 99 point number to indicate control readings, although the letters STN can also be used. And beneath that, we can see the detail readings. As I scroll down, we come to a side shot to a station called I2 and at the very bottom we've got foresight onto I1. The control observations can appear at any point in the file but by default Enforce will assume the last control readings are the next station in the traverse. If I then focus on station I1 it in turn as you can see backsides A and to come down foresights a station called I3. I3, hence backsides I1, and so on. As you can see, we've got no coordinates, and if we go to the stations folder, we've got no coordinates in there either. So we need to use the Travis to calculate everything for us. So I'll start by focusing on the job, right clicking, and choosing Travis. We can see all the known setups there on the left, and the stations that they in turn backsite and foresight. Enforce assumes the last control readings on a setup are for the next station in the Travis. Here we can see it's I1. If it was in fact I2, we'd just focus on I2 and make that the foresight. For the circumstances here, we need it to be on I1 though. So I press foresight, press auto. Okay, so Enforce has analyzed the observations and because it started at A and finished at A, it knows it's a closed loop traverse. We press next. We can see that if we assume start coordinates of 0, 0, we don't in fact come back to zero, 0, so we have our disclosures here presented to us on the top left, positional and angular. So I'll start by giving A some um, decent coordinates, so I'll say 1000, 2000, give it a height of say 100. Okay, and the bearing here is what stops the traverse spinning infinitely around A. In the circumstances, that is the actual horizontal angle that was measured whilst at A, looking back to I5, so it's assuming it's a whole circle bearing. For the purpose of the demonstration though, we will make it 45 degrees. If we click out of that cell, the traverse is recalculated, or rather, the trigonometry of the traverse is recalculated, and you can see that we are still off 1,000, 2,000. If I press next, the traverse has been recalculated using the Bowditch method, Starting at 1000, 2000, we now finish at 1000, 2000, and at the top we have the misclosures after the angular error, is, angular error was redistributed. If I finish, the traverse has now been calculated, we're now at the reduction stage. So Enforce is now showing us the reduction report for each of the known setups. So here, if I focus on I1, we can see that the reference object has coordinates 1000, 2000 but it's in fact calculating to be slightly off, hence we have a slight error, which we can see here. Now by setting the tolerances as we see fit, Enforce can tell us how many checks have been failed. Focus on I3 here, it's failing four. It's up to the user to decide whether or not these are suitable for the survey. I'm going to assume they are for the moment, so I'm going to press OK. Enforce is still warning us that we have some errors. Is it okay to continue? I'm going to say yes it is. Enforce presents us with a Travis report. I scroll to the top. We can see all the observations, face left and face right, the meaning of them, and the final result of those averages. And as we scroll down, we can see this coordinates for A, any corrections that have been applied, the Travis before any adjustments have been applied, the disclosures, and the computer traverse, and then the computer stations. 
After that you have the reduction report, so uh, it's comparing the known coordinates to how you've observed them. I can either be saved or printed. I'll close it down for the moment and go to station A. You can see we now have coordinates. If I focus on the job, go to the camera, Enforce displays the survey for us. What we see is a result of Enforce interpreting the codes and the points via the code table. If I zoom in, we can see here that we have a line joining some points. If I query that, Enforce tells us that it's a road, RD. If I go to coding, you can see that it's going to draw a point. It's going to draw a line between the points and the layer roads, pen solid, dark grey. And it's going to annotate those points to three decimal places and the layer heights. We have some points here that are just really crosses on the screen, so if I query those, okay, it's telling us that these are SHs, and these are the raw horizontal angles or vertical angles that generated the points. If I try and go to coding, and force is binging at us, which is telling us that point doesn't actually exist in the code table yet. So cancel that, I need to add it to the code table. So we go to settings, come down to codes. I scroll down the list of codes that are in Enforce by default. I come down, I can see a code called SL, spot level. We need to call it SH. So I'm going to add, type in SH, which in fact duplicates the SL. So in fact, we could change the description now to spot height. If we look, it's going to draw a point on the layer survey point in the pen dark gray. Maybe we want that in green. Don't want a line, we don't want a symbol on the point, we don't really want any annotation on the point, so to speak. We don't want a shape, but we do want the heights plotted. So they are enabled on the layer heights to three decimal places. So if I press OK and F5, you can see now green points with height annotation. And that concludes the simple demonstration of importing survey observations and reducing a traverse in Enforce.